it could intensify even further. Turning now to Hurricane Irma, the storm is now a Category 4 hurricane and it has prompted the governor of Florida to declare a state of emergency. This is video from Hurricane Hunters with NOAA who flew into the storm. Irma is strengthening in the Atlantic, but there are fears Florida could be in its path. Meteorologist Jeff Berardelli from our West Palm Beach affiliate WPEC has the forecast. Here's the latest on Hurricane Irma. It is a formidable system looking very healthy on its satellite presentation. This is predicted to continue to strengthen over the next 24 to 48 hours. Hurricane watches and warnings are out right now. We have hurricane warnings out for places like St. Martin and Antigua. And we also have hurricane watches out for the U.S. and British Virgin Islands in Puerto Rico as well. This is the official track from the National Hurricane Center, which makes it a Category 4 and keeps it a Category 4. Passes by the Caribbean corner right here. Here, uh, on Wednesday morning with winds of 145 miles an hour. Very strong storm maintains its category four status as it moves into the southeast Bahamas on Friday and then into the Florida Straits near Cuba on Saturday with winds of 130 miles an hour. This is what all the computer models say about the system moving just north of Puerto Rico, Haiti and the Dominican Republic. It gets just south of the Florida Keys and makes a sharp hook to the north. The latest European model parallels the southeast coast of Florida impacting Miami, impacting Fort Lauderdale, impacting West Palm Beach, and then headed towards the southeast coast of the United States. This is the steering flow with Irma right now. High pressure is forcing it uh, to the west. The system eventually is going to put the brakes on just to the south of the Keys. And here's the unfortunate thing. The first jet stream is going to miss it. Otherwise, it would turn out to sea. It doesn't look like that jet stream is going to be able to catch it. A second little jet stream, a weaker dip, will dip to the south and probably lift the circulation north. The question is, where will that happen? Everybody in Florida needs to watch this extremely closely and start making initial preparations for a hurricane on Saturday and Sunday. And after that, we have to see if it, in fact, impacts the southeast coast. And throw up the water vapor imagery. This depicts dry air from very moist air. You can depict the uh, drier air in the reds there and the browns, and then the moist air all around the system there. Notice no dry air getting pulled into it, so that should not be an issue to inhibit any further growth there. On top of that, moving into very, very warm ocean waters, anywhere from a half a degree to a full degree, above average. Now, I know that doesn't sound like much, indiscernible to you and I, but that's all that much more energy for this storm to use as fuel. In fact, the warm waters aren't just at the surface. They extend down to great depths. That means as the storm moves off into the Bahamas and it slows down, like it's forecast to do, something that we call upwelling won't be so much of an issue. Upwelling is when the storm is so intense, it kind of mixes up the air, not the air, the ocean waters, excuse me, and pulls up the cooler water from below and in turn cools down the ocean surface. That won't be so much of an issue as we go through the next several days with this since the water, warm water extends to such a depth that upwelling will not really stop it. As it's moving into the Bahamas, that's where you're going to find some of the warmest waters in the Atlantic. We're talking temperatures 86, 87, 88, even 89 degrees as you get towards the Bahamas there.